This is the Healy Brothers Show. Welcome to the Healy Brothers Show. We got my brother Dylan. And then we got a new guest today. Very special guest. Special man himself. <laughs> we have Chris Bellantoni, our general manager of Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, who's also been a very, very long-term pl- employee of us. Uh, I've known him for a very long time, and so is my dad and my family. And his uncle was a general manager at, at Hyundai at one point. So, Chris, if you just want to introduce yourself, how long you've been with Healy, and and you're upcoming into now the general manager role of Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Yeah, no, thanks, Jay. Appreciate you guys having me here today. Uh, yeah, I've been with Healy for 14 years this August, which is bizarre. Um, before that, I actually was a weekend lock guy at uh, Healy Ford in Goshen when I was in high school. So that was in like 2004. So wow. pretty wild. And then went to college. Came I out. thought you were 50. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm 60. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've, uh, you know, Healy's welcomed me with open arms and had a great career and uh, looking forward to what the future has, you know, between your, your guys, Dwight, Paul, John Kerner, you guys have always treated me like gold. So I, I love the I love the company and I've said hands down it's the best company to work for, no doubt. Well, we think of you as family. So, so um, feelings mutual. Appreciate yeah, that. So yeah. I feel the same way. So I know. Uh, well, th- if you can elaborate kind of just yeah, on you where, where you went in Healy Brothers, you, you worked a lot for the summers, went to college, came back, and then where, where'd you go in from there? Yeah, so uh, I was, what, 16 years old, and uh, I went out to Healy Ford as just a weekend lock guy. They needed a guy with Cochise. Remember Cochise? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember Cochise. So Co- I, we, all, we all work for Cochise, yeah. too. So I remember Cochise, he was telling my uncle at the time when he was out there, he was like, oh, I need the weekends off. So my uncle was like, yeah, I'll get my, my idiot nephew, and he'll come and be the weekend guy. <laughs> yeah. So did that, and then uh, you know went to college, University of Albany. Was supposed to be a police officer, and uh, you know I had a little bit of downtime before actually starting. So Chris Bermelin's like, yeah, come sell Hyundai's for a little bit. Okay, went there, and I was like, yep, not gonna be a police officer. I'm staying with Hilly. <laughs> and uh, sold cars from 2010 to 2013. Then uh, was promoted to finance manager, and then eventually general sales manager of a Hyundai store, and then took over at. Chrysler in November of 18 as the GM. So, Dwight and you November guys. 18? It's been that long? Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. See the grays? See the grays? <laughs> yeah. Those uh, come with general I didn't know it was 2018. Yeah, it feels 20, like it was November just... of 2018. Wow. Crazy, right? What a ride. Oh, yeah. It's been a ride. It's <laughs> well, been a ride. to another 40 years. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, just just first off, I want to touch on the Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram product, um, the brands, uh, the parent company, Slantis. I know we hear different stories. If you just want to elaborate, what's going on with them? What, what are we seeing? Are they, we're heading in the right direction? If you just want to let everyone know what's going on there. Yeah, so it's, you know, everybody knows the world right now is, is making that turn to the EVs, the battery operated, the, the um, you know, hybrid vehicles. And, you know, people think Jeep and you don't necessarily think electric car, right? I, I never thought electric car when I think of Jeep, but Right now, our biggest sellers, you got the Jeep 4xEs, which are killing it. They're flying out of here. You have the Grand Cherokee 4xEs, and we have a lot of good stuff in the pipeline coming for, uh, you know, for electric. So it's pretty exciting stuff that is coming. And, you know, everybody says it's coming, it's coming, but it's right around the corner. We're pretty excited. Yeah, and also, also Slants has done a good job. They're also helping with their pricing and stuff like that. Better leases now. They're kind of turning, their sh- turning, turning the right direction for all that as well. Yeah, I mean, back when, you know, in the COVID times, you know, we had we were down to seven cars i think on our lot at one point you know we were doing car shows because just to fill the space in the lot and uh you know obviously a lot's happened since then and you know stellantis has you know they've stepped up they've put a lot of programs out there right now and it's starting to really get back to reality you know they're trying to battle you know the environment today you know interest rates are high everybody knows it cars are expensive everybody knows it then you have that transition into electric which they're uh you know they're they're pretty ahead of the game compared to what most people think, and we're, we're really excited to see where they're going to end up. Well, yeah, it's also they, they have a ton of plug-in hybrids now. Oh yeah, Grand Cherokee four by E, the Wrangler four by E, the Pacifica plug-in. They've had the Pacifica for a long time right. too. They got a Hornet plug-in, Hornet, right? Yep. So it's uh, they're there. They're yeah. they're they're a hundred percent in. So. And it's also nice to hear from from the actual front lines of, from a dealership perspective. Instead, you always hear from the factory, "We're doing this, you're doing this," or you're hearing it from a third party, "Ah, oh, they're behind." Like. Like hearing it from the front lines <laughs> means so much more to me, and seeing it and living it than, than hearing it from a third party that's that has no idea really what's going on. Sure, they just look at the numbers. So sure, but the, you know the team, myself, we're there every day. We're seeing it. We're interacting with the customers every day. 
we see what these cars are doing and and you know we can give the real fe feedback to yourselves and to the factory of what's going on so right all right so let, let's break it down by brand right now i know i know there's there's four different brands within Slantis, and people always like oh they always consider it one brand but they all have their own different little niches mm -hmm. i would say yep so if you sort of touch on chrysler where, where's where's the chrysler brand at right so right now chrysler makes two vehicles right they make the pacifica and they make the chrysler 300. <clears throat> pacificas we sell you know 10 times more than we sell the 300 but what i saw the best thing that chrysler did was make that all-wheel drive pacifica you know right now uh, the pacifica and the sienna are the only two all-wheel drive vehicle all-wheel drive minivans out there right now and minivan like made a comeback huge huge you know and minivans are they're you know they're not twenty thousand dollar vehicles brand new but listen i would drive a minivan every day i try to tell my wife and you can ask her Get a Pacifica. I'll get you an old drive. She loves her Durango, right? But I'm like, I, I would drive a Pacifica every day. They're the most comfortable vehicle. You look good in a minivan, ever. actually. I would look great. I would look great. <laughs> nice captain's chairs. Yeah, they're comfortable, man. They're the best for the family. They come with the stow and go, so everything can lay flat. I love it. I love the Pacificas. All right, so let's move on to Dodge, known as the the heavy muscle, and you always you always have your um your muscle heads and the, the big challengers, the big motors, right. 800, 900 horsepower vehicles. So if you want to touch on what, what's going on with that brand, where are they at, yeah. and what are you seeing? Yeah, so the former CEO, Tim Kaniskis, I met him out in Vegas last year. Um, he was the CEO of Dodge, and uh, he said the best quote I've ever heard. He said, Dodge is the neck tattoo of the car industry, which I thought was the most <laughs> badass quote. That is a... Right? Yeah. Uh, you have to put that up on the screen when he says that, I, Mickey. It, it was the best. That, that really hit me out of that whole Vegas trip, and I'm like, man... He's like, you know, because it's he's all about Hellcats. How fast can we go? 700, 800, 900, 1,000 horsepower in the in the demons, right? So when I, you know, he wanted to make a manufacturer be the most badass manufacturer they can. And even though, you know, things are starting to move towards the electric and everything, he wants to make the most badass electric cars you can get. 1,000 horsepower electric cars doesn't care. Right. He wants to make them fun. And, you know, I respect that. The guy is a passion, and he's following his passion instead of doing maybe what – you know the the normal what everybody else is doing he wants to do the complete opposite and i have total well that, that makes me excited excited that they didn't want all the power in the world because you know i'm a power guy i got the track hawk oh, so yeah. well, healy family loves him yeah. Yeah. oh yeah <laughs> we love i mean it sounds like him. he truly knows his customer you know everybody that drives a dodge has that same you know same persona mm -hmm. they want to go fast they want to have a badass loud you know vehicle and yeah. They had the running joke for a while. When's the Hellcat engine going to be in the Chrysler Pacifica? <laughs> so you know, and I bet it probably wasn't going to be that far down the. Yeah, if there the wasn't quarter. all these EV mandates, it'd probably <laughs> your, your all-wheel drive Pacifica would be doing <laughs> zero to sixty in three seconds yeah. for the kids. <laughs> <laughs> so they are doing some cool stuff with that with the electric. They're they're like putting those the sound in there and stuff like that, so you can still get that feeling of it, right? Are yeah. they doing that? Yep, they're doing that with the uh, the new Charger Daytona that's going to be coming out. We don't know exactly when, but there's release dates. You know, maybe. <laughs> And we'll put those up on the screen so that so everyone can see those those yeah. new EV uh, Dodge vehicles. They're pretty they're they're pretty cool. They, yeah. they need but some pretty cool concepts. There's several different powertrains that they that they're going to release in that. It's not going to be a fully electric Dodge Charger, right? Not I mean, full. there's going to be one. There's going to be, but you're going to see the you know the the Hurricane engine, which I'm sure we'll talk about you know a little bit later. Um, you know that engine with the twin turbo 3.03 .03 turbo is a pretty badass engine. Right, it holds ass, and you'll see it in those cars. Yes, the Hemi's gone. They're not doing it. It's only going to be in the 2500s for that. That was their claim to fame, man. Um, All right, it, it was. It was. Oh. And listen, I've had Rams since 2017. Every single one had a Hemi. And now I just drove this new Hurricane Twin Turbo. And let me tell you, I had to put it in four-wheel auto just so the back tires wouldn't break loose. Oh, I love it. It moves. And, th and that's not even the high output. Oh, I heard you drive pretty slow usually. Uh, I'm, I'm <laughs> hands at 10 and 2, follow the speed limit. Seatbelt on, you know, law-abiding citizen. Absolutely, yes. That's me. So one other Dodge vehicle that I think people sleep on, which I think is for a great value, is that Dodge Hornet. If you just want to touch on that, I, I mean, I, I don't think many people really know about it. Right. Um, it's something that we have to do to get better out there. I mean, the price of the vehicles is killer. It's a cool-looking little car. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's right now. It's it's probably one of the best leasing vehicles out there right now. They make a bunch of different models. Um, I've driven them. The thing's got plenty of power. Um, you know, it depends on what what fits your family's needs. They do make just a gas, and they do make the, the plug-in hybrid on an RTE all-wheel drive. The things move, they, they haul ass. Right. So, uh, you know, I think, you know, once they kind of get out there, once people hear about this vehicle more, 
they'll start coming in and really being like, wow, this is uh, where was this car two years ago? So um, we have a good variety of them in stock right now. I'd love people to come check them out, go for a ride. At, le- at least give them a ride. Sure, totally. You got to drive it. It's a car you have to drive to really be like, wow, this is this is amazing. Yeah. So l- let's move on to uh, the Pride and Joy, which one again, America's car, uh, mm-hmm. the Jeep. That's right. Yeah, I mean, listen, when you think Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Jeep is what always, it stands out out of those four, you know, in my opinion. And, you know, these, peop- these Jeep people, you know, just like you Healy's, um, it's a cult. They love their Jeeps, right? The Grand Cherokees, people just come back, they love them. Then you got the Wranglers. The amount of upfits and everything we do to these vehicles in the service department, they just keep coming back, coming back, coming back. I've seen Jeeps like, oh my God, I've never seen anything like that in my life. <laughs> right. You know, and they're, you know, for up here, you're in the Northeast, you know, they can go through anything. So, um, you know, I know you guys have your, you know, track walks, 392s. I love it. I love that you guys oh, we are love- so passionate about it. Too. Oh, we're Jeep people. Uh, I, lo- I know. Yeah, I we're Jeep people. I Don't- love it. They'll they'll trade it to the other side for a little bit. I'm sure, I'm sure he'll be back. Boo. Yeah. They just gotta throw that I'm loyal. T8 motor in the <laughs> Grand Cherokee again. Yep. That's it. I'm yep. loyal. <laughs> All right. Last but not least, we have the Ram. Right. So I know we were just talking about a little bit your new Ram, but if you don't want to touch on that. Yeah, totally. Um <clears throat> out of out of all the products, the Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Ram's my favorite, hands down. I've had seven or eight of them since twenty seventeen. Um there's some cool stuff coming out. Uh, with the Ram, um, one including what they call the Ram Charger. So I was talking to Nick actually earlier today explaining what this Ram Charger does. And it's a full electric Ram, but it has a V6 gas engine as well. So think about that. It's a full electric Ram, but it has a V6 gas engine. Makes no sense. But here's what it does. My, my brain's twisted. Yeah, right. same here. So, figure, so check this out. It's going gonna, it's gonna to give you a 3.6 V6 gas engine and that engine only powers a generator that generator now powers an electric battery i think i heard this but that's amazing it's unbelievable if you think about it right so now you can drive here california stop at the gas station but your car only runs on electric right it can get 700 miles on a full tank okay but it's only using your electric engine the entire time it uses the V6 just to power this generator. That generator powers the battery. And the emissions got up to almost zero, right? Almost zero. It's just a little bit of whatever it's taken for Fuel the V6. Fuel for the generator, right? Yeah. See, that's, that's like it. one thing. They I'm gotta, dumbfounded. I didn't yeah. know that that's how that truck was going yeah. to work. I, I can't they wait to see They got to pump that out there more because that's like some serious technology. Right. They, they talk about it a little bit. And I'm a simple person. I'm mind blown. Right. Well, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. I can't wait to see this thing. It's going to be cool. And it's going to have almost 700 horsepower, standard. Right. Which... As we know, we love our horsepower. We do love our horsepower. Oh, mm-hmm. can't talk about it enough. <laughs> I know, I know. And then I what can't. about this RHO that I hear whispers about? Yeah, so I, I personally have one on order. Um, it's, you know, everybody... Explain what the RHO is, though, so everyone knows. Yeah, so everybody probably knows what the TRX is, right? right. I've had one. still my favorite car I've ever owned. I know, you know, you guys got them as well. Um, so with the RHO, instead of having that Hellcat engine, it's going to have the high-output twin-turbo hurricane. It's going to have the same type of suspension setup, same off-road setup. Same dimensions, that same wide, size, same, right? Yeah, same wide body, everything. Right. But it's, it's gonna be a tank. It's it's things gonna be. A it's tank. a tank. It's right. a tank. So make sure you put that up there, Nikki. Too. That's that's some good stuff right there. Yeah. All right. We're so looking, we're looking forward to that. Yeah, so. that should be great. I'm sure there's already customers reaching out about that. We have a couple of people sold orders already. Just oh. waiting for them. So they they should start arriving September, October, something. Like that. And that's another Raptor killer. If anyone wants to know, probably shouldn't say that since we have <laughs> Ford, but it, it is. I didn't want to say it. But. Yeah, we could we could say it though because <laughs> we're we're rocking the Ram trucks. That's right. Yeah. Con, Con would definitely say the rim. Oh, yeah. No doubt. Uh, so let's just move on to, let's just talk about some challenges and opportunities within the Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Where do you see the biggest opportunity and where do you see the biggest challenge for not just your not just your store, but for the brands the brands overall, like competing against Ford, Chrysler, who they're probably their main competitor, uh, not Chrysler, Ford and Chevy like are probably their main comp- competitors. Where do you see the opportunities against them? Where do you see the challenges? How, how do we overcome them and how do we push forward? Yeah, so um, just in general, first of all, vehicles have gotten more expensive over the last couple of years. So it makes it even more difficult to retain those same customers to stay with your OEM, right? I want people to come in with their Jeeps, and I want them to come out, go home with their new lease Jeep, right? I don't want, me personally, I don't want people to start comparing a Jeep to a, you know, a Grand Cherokee to a Traverse and all these other vehicles. I want them to stay with us. So, you know, with, 
I think with the change in technology and the and the the different setups that Stellantis is doing with these Jeep products and these Ram products, um, you know, the constant change to make things a little bit different, I think, is going to help keep the customers with us, and so they don't start shopping other brands. And it's the same with other brands, you know. Chevy has to do the same thing. They, exactly. You know, if you get stale, people want to go to to go see something else. Jeep doesn't get stale. There's always something out there, right? There's always you know, some type of tweak they're doing that everyone's like, oh, man, what are they doing now? Right. So I, I always like the constant change that they're trying to, you know, change these vehicles up and, and do the best they can to try to keep the customers with their brand. All right, excellent. So what, So would you say, if we're, if we're comparing some of the brands right now, do you see do you see Jeep, Ram really just blowing, blowing away some other competition in the coming years? Oh, 100 percent. Totally. Um, you know, we, we know what the trajectory is you know, going to look like in a couple of years, um, you know, but there's a lot going on in the next five years in the car business. You know, with this this EV electric is going to have a lot to do with, you know, which OEMs are going to start really taking the lead. And, you know, with Jeep, with the four by E's and the Grand Cherokee four by E's, I think that's one of the best things that they've done. And that's really going to propel us to really, um, you know, hopefully, you know, surpass some of these other big names. Excellent. Excellent. All right, so let's move into some consumer insights. What are what are your customers saying about about these new hybrids and and electric vehicles coming out? Because I know you have some of the loyal people that love that horsepower and muscle like we do. Sure. So I'm sure you hear it. You're, all your friends love it too. Oh yeah. I know a couple of the guys they're always calling you when I'm in there or stopping by to see you. You know. Yeah. So if you just want to touch on what customers are thinking about it, what what are they saying about the product, and where are their heads at with with everything? Sure. So we we see plenty of customers that come in. Right. They've been leasing Wranglers. Let's just call it a Jeep Wrangler for now for years. They come in, nah, I don't want an electric car, I just want a gas car. Well, we ask them why, what, what is it? What is it about this vehicle that you're not interested in? And it's, we see more of it, people don't understand it, right? They're afraid of it, people are afraid of what they don't know. All of a sudden, you know, take a look at it. The deals are fantastic on them right now. They go into it and all of a sudden, they're, they, they're blown away by how much they like it. They love the technology, they love the fact that you can get a realistic 23 miles on just a full electric. So. I think people are, are still hesitant of it, but as they're coming in, we're selling the four by E's 15 to one to a gas engine right now. And right. it's, yeah, the deals are great on them, but I think we've changed a lot of minds of how people have looked at electric vehicles and, and hybrids right now. So they're coming in and they're, they're flying mm -hmm. out of here. I couldn't keep, uh, if it was up to me, I'd have as many four by E vehicles. Yeah, so, so the, the, the couple of guys you sold the four by E's to at market basket, they go to me, they go, I make it to work. I don't ever use gas. Yeah, it's great. They never use gas. They live like in the same little Warwick area, so it's just like the perfect. They go plug in the market basket. They drive never gas their uh, except for on the weekends when they're taking their kids to, because their kids are right. in sports. But mm -hmm. I'm just like you never never fill the like, no nah, never fill never fill my tank. Yeah, I mean you're getting 23 miles on on full. Electric. People don't realize how far that actually gets you. Huge. Yeah, so it's it's pretty it's great for local. A absolutely, oh. you know your your local is really where you're going to make up that that gas mileage difference. But even if you're not in the, the electric, and let's say it, it switches over to the gas engine, that two liter turbo hauls ass, man. It's, it's a fast engine and it's eco uh, economical. So even if you're not doing just your, your, your regular battery, it switches over to the gas engine and that thing, that thing is a right. ton of power. And then it operates as a hybrid, right? So you're, you're not just getting full electric, but you're also getting the hybrid aspect of the plug-in hybrid. Correct, right? yeah. yeah. You can drive here to California, no problem. Stop at right. a gas station yeah. like you normally would. Right. You know, and it has regenerative break-in. You know, it'll it will, you know, self-charge. But right. you can always stop off if you're, you know, it's time for a, a break. You want to, you know, grab some lunch with the family. You sit there, plug it in. You get another twenty miles on your way. Right. It's, it's the best thing. Right. So like the I, best of both worlds. Yeah. 100%. And that's kind of what like the narrative is in the news right now. You know, I they're pushing these hybrids as the, yeah, you know, the the middleman between a, an ICE motor and yeah. a full EV. My my personal opinion is. A fantastic hybrid engine, a fantastic hybrid setup is the future. For sure. You can get me uh, uh, a vehicle that I can get 60-something miles per gallon in a, in a pickup truck and still have the power to tow and go wherever I want and not have to have that Peace worry. Peace of mind. Yeah, that, yeah, that worry. Have eight, nine 900, 1,000 miles to right. a tank. That's, yeah. All right. That's give, give me a 60-mile-per-gallon pickup truck that's a hybrid. I'll sign right now for it. Right. You know? And I yep. think a lot of people would, too. Absolutely. Yep. That's the big thing. So just one more people group I want to touch on yeah. are those really big muscle guys because I know they're your friends I know yeah. that there's some guys that come in mm -hmm. what are they saying about an all EV challenger all EV charger so they're you know they haven't seen it yet right so they're definitely uh, skeptical but they got to see it 
and I, I am too. You know, let's be real. I'm you guys. I'm a Corvette guy. I love my power. I've done my you know my days at the racetracks. I, I love my power. And when you think power, you don't think of an electric vehicle. But I think people are going to be pleasantly surprised when these cars show up. I right. think they're going to be. You have to drive it. It's something you can't just look at it. You can't just hear about it. You got to get in it and drive it. And just to kind of sidetrack for a second, the Hyundai, uh, what was it, the Ionic N? Ionic yeah. 5N. Yeah. yeah. Let me tell you. It's a rocket ship. <laughs> Scary little car. I drove the car. I, there was four people in it, and I drove it, and I could not believe the power of this thing. You know, and it has the sound, right? It has right. all the, the yeah, speakers, all sound. So yeah. it sounds like you're in it. It sounds like you're in a race car. Right. And I drove this, and I was like, are you kidding me right now? This car was unbelievable. So just a little shout for that vehicle. If anybody's in the market, that thing is, you got to check it out. Un I was blown away. So now, you know, we got to get the people when the, the uh, you know, the Chargers and the Charger Daytona shows up. We got to get the people driving that now. Yeah. I mean, I think they'll definitely give it a chance because a couple of years ago, a Jeep buyer, a Ram buyer, were like, get me away from this battery. Right. Just the, the way the buyer was. They're skeptical. Right. Now it's the hottest product on our lot. Sure. So is, are those four by Yeah. The hottest product on our lot. Totally. I mean, they were... Last question. I know we talked about the future outlook where we see it. It's going EVs, hybrids. Um, we want the Stellantis, the Chrysler Jeep Ram people to, to really take a look at what's going, what's coming for this for these products because they're actually phenomenal. Lots of the power's still there. If you're worried about power, it's coming, and more of it is coming actually. Uh, the efficiency is coming, and it'll be here soon. But how does Healy Chrysler Dodge Jeep brand? How do we differ from the from the other Chrysler Chrysler stores around us? What makes us different? So first, just the Healy name, right? So the Healy name was in 1977. Is when, yeah. I've yeah. done my research. You study today? You know? So, uh, you know, the Healy name, the backing from Healy Brothers is is huge value, right? And Healy, back in the day when I was in high school, I used to hear the radio ads. We deliver value, right? I remember I could hear it in my sleep, and I didn't even work for Healy really yet. Um, but having Healy have your back... Um, and just not the little Joe Schmo dealerships that, you know, that could be out there. That's huge. You know, when people come to us, we may not be the, we're not the most expensive. We're not the cheapest. We're somewhere in the middle. Because if we're the most expensive dealer, people aren't going to buy from us. If we're the cheapest dealer, we're going to go out of business. We have to stay in that middle ground. And having the Healy name and having the support of everybody with Healy Brothers, Customers know that, you know, we, we, we get out there, we have, there's tons of social media contact, which you guys do a fantastic job. Um, you know, you want people to come here and feel comfortable. And I think when people come to Healy, they come in, they've seen what Healy's all about. They see our reviews and they come and they feel comfortable. And I think that's a huge thing that differentiates, differentiates us from, you know, the average dealer that's out there, not just Chrysler Jeep Ram, all the stores that Healy has. Right. Yeah. I, I like to touch on it. I mean, it's, it's our teams too. It's your team. They're true professionals. They're not they're not here just taking orders or anything like that. They're here to help you get what you need at the right price. They uh, will work their, their butts off to make sure that you're leaving here happy, excited, and you want to come back for service and, and buy your buy your cars for life from us. So that's kudos to your leadership and your whole team's leadership because they wouldn't come back if we didn't have the right people in place, and you and we all seem to do that, and, and you guys do a phenomenal job. So sure. no, that's definitely I, a big part of it. And I appreciate it. And, you know, your your dad is, you know, probably the, the best leader that I've, I've ever met. You know, it comes down. The fish rots from the head, right? And your dad is... One-liners, baby. I'm telling you. He's, he's, he is... You see what, what your dad has done, and it just it, it trickles down to everybody in the organization. Uh, you know, people would run head first. To, to, to work for your dad and that's why everybody wants to work for Healy right. and you know there's people that have we've hired and they've heard about Healy and they've always wanted the opportunity and now that they work here they, they, they would never leave and and I couldn't agree more well that means a lot that yeah. means uh, so thank you for that that's definitely 100% uh, heartful, and, it, so. and we and it's you know it we and I mean it I mean it 100% man alright well Chris I appreciate it anything else you want to touch on with the the brand or anything like just like that stay tuned you know chrysler dodge jeep ram stellantis has a lot of good stuff you know keep an eye out for for the future because we i would say now in between this time next year you got the jeep recon that's coming out that's the full electric off-road jeep that's going to be coming out you have the wagoneer s which is the full electric wagoneer that's going to be an awesome vehicle and almost 400 miles well that'll probably be in your driveway i would imagine we'll see we'll see depends <laughs> if my wife behaves <laughs> um but and uh you know, the Dodge Stealth, which I don't know if anybody's heard of the Dodge Stealth that's going to be coming out. Everybody remembers, 
like the Mitsubishi 3000 GT, a little sports yeah. car, the Dodge Stealth was almost its replica. Now it's going to be replacing the Dodge Durango. Now, my wife could be the biggest advocate for Dodge Durango. She loves it. She's on her third, I think, right now. She could be a spokesperson for Durango. And when I told her, listen, Durango's, that's it, after after next year. It's not coming out. But Did she write a letter? Uh, she's probably right, <laughs> starting to write the letter right now. Which is it, right? <laughs> so, But it's being replaced by this Dodge Stealth, which is going to be a third-row SUV with that twin-turbo Hurricane engine. That's starting at, like, forty grand. So that, that I think, is going to be one of the coolest vehicles out there. Um, you know, because everybody, everybody wants SUVs these days, and everybody's got their two kids, and everybody needs their third row, even though they never pop up the third row, right? Um, so there's a lot of cool stuff to look forward to. And, uh, you know, with the support of everybody, we have a great sales team, and, uh, you know, we have a lot of cool stuff that's going to be happening in the next year. So looking forward to it. Yeah, awesome yeah I stuff. think you've seen some pledges from the executive team over at the Stellantis brand to, you know, regain some market share. And sure. the products they're bringing are – you know, they're they're there's what they're portraying is going to take back that market share and, and gain some Jeep customers back. So it's good to see that. Yeah. I mean, I've trusted them. I'm a Jeep guy like everyone. Yeah. I, can, I can't say it anymore. I'm a Jeep guy. You are. Yep. I am, yeah. too. Yep. Yeah. And, and I know I know my little brother, Connor, he would say he'd die for a Ram truck. That's right. <laughs> that boy would die for a Ram Coming truck. Motor. Yeah. The Heelys yeah. love it. Yeah, oh, we do. That. We I do love, love it. it. You guys love it. Yeah. All right, Chris, I appreciate it. We'll definitely get you back on. That was awesome. Absolutely. Thank guys. you. Appreciate you having me. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, hit that subscribe button, and follow us at Healy Brothers on all social platforms.